Hello, everyone. My name is Zim Neubert. I'm the Executive Director of Project Cornerstone at the YMCA of Silicon Valley. For those of you who know us, you might be very familiar with two of our programs, ABC, Asset Building Champions, and Los Dichos, where volunteers go into the classroom once a month to read a book and lead a lesson. One of the books that both programs use is called Rene Has Two Last Names. I'm going to attempt, attempt the Spanish. Rene Tiene Dos Apellidos, written by Rene Colado Leines. And today I won't be doing a full lesson. I'm just going to be doing the reading, but I'm so happy to have the author himself join us. He's an award-winning author, an elementary school teacher in Los Angeles Unified School District. And for those of you who remember, in 2017, he was our guest keynote speaker at the volunteer celebration. Welcome, Senor Rene Calado Leines. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here reading Rene de Medos Apellidos. I will read the Spanish part. So, thank you. Rene, would you mind telling us why you wrote this book back in 2009? I wrote this book because when, when I came to the United, when I came from El Salvador to the United States, at school, the teacher told me that I, I could use only my father's last name, only one last name. And I said, no, I have two last names. I am Colato like my father, but I, I am also Lainez like my mother and I have two last names. So that's memory. I uh, was an inspiration to write my book, which is, comes from my real life. It's a real life experience. And this is my ID from first grade, primer grado in El Salvador. As you can see, the name of my school is Re Escuela República de Chile Número Dos. And my name is right there, René Colato Lapines, my two last names. Thank you. And as Renee said, uh, we're going to be reading together. I'll be reading in English and he'll be reading in Spanish. So let's get started. Renee has two last names. Written by Renee Colato Leines, illustrations by Fabiola Grayera Ramirez. On the first day at my new school, my teacher, Ms. Doria, gave me a sticker that said, Rene Colato. The sticker was missing my second last name. Maybe Ms. Soria's pen ran out of ink. I took my pencil and added it. Now it looked right. Rene Colato Lainez. El primer día en la nueva escuela, mi maestra, señorita Soria, me dio una calcamonía que decía Rene Colato. A la calcamonía le faltaba mi segundo apellido, Quizá a la pluma de señorita Soria se le terminó la tinta. Tomé mi lápiz y lo agregué. René Colato Laines. Ahora estaba perfecto. In El Salvador, I wrote my name on my homework, my books, and my birthday party invitations. René Colato Laines was a happy song that made me dance to the rhythms of the cha-cha-cha. But in the United States, the song lost the guiros, maracas, and drums. Why does my name have to be different here? En El Salvador, escribía mi nombre en mis tareas, en mis libros y en mis invitaciones de cumpleaños. René Colato Laines. Era una canción feliz que me hacía bailar al ritmo de cha cha cha. Pero en Estados Unidos, la canción perdió los guiros. Las maracas y los timbales. ¿Por qué mi nombre tenía que ser diferente aquí? At my desk, I wrote my name on a piece of paper. When I wrote Colado, I saw my grandparents, Rene and Amelia, singing with me. When I wrote Laenes, I saw my grandparents, Angela and Julio, dancing with me. Rene Colado looked incomplete. It was like a hamburger without the meat, or a pizza without cheese, or a hot dog without a wiener. Yuck. En mi escritorio escribí mi nombre en una hoja. 
Juan de Suiri Colato y a mis abuelos René y Amelia cantando conmigo. Juan de Suiri la Inés y a mis abuelos Ángela y Julio bailando conmigo. René Colato me parecía incompleto. Era como una hamburguesa sin carne o una pizza sin queso o un perro caliente sin salchicha. ¡Guácatela! During recess, I played soccer with my classmates. A boy looked at my sticker and asked, what is your name? René Colato Lallenes, I told him. That's a long dinosaur name, he laughed. Your name is longer than an anaconda, another boy giggled. It's a blue whale from head to tail, said the goalie. Durante el recreo, jugué fútbol con mis compañeros de clase. Un niño miró mi calcamonilla y me preguntó, ¿Cómo te llamas? René Colato Laínez, le dije. Es un nombre tan largo como un dinosaurio, se rió. Tu nombre es más largo que una anaconda, dijo otro niño riendo. Es una ballena azul de la cola a la cabeza, dijo el portero. At home, while I was eating a cheese pupusa and drinking horchata, I told my parents, in school, they call me René Colato, not René Colato Laenes. That's too bad, Mama said. Laenes is a fine last name. Don't worry, son. Laenes is in your heart, Papa said. You're right, I said, and I took another bite from my pupusa. En mi casa, mientras comía una pupusa de queso y tomaba borchata, le dije a mis padres, En la escuela me llama René Colato, no René Colato Laínez. ¡Qué pena! Dijo mamá. Laínez es un buen apellido. No te preocupes, hijo. Laínez está en tu corazón, dijo papá. Tienen razón, dije, y le di otra mordida a mi pupusa. That night, I dreamed that my last name, Laínez, had disappeared from my life. I was left alone with Papa and my relatives from my father's side. I looked everywhere, but Mama was not in the dining room helping me with homework. Abuela Angela was not in the kitchen making my favorite chocolate. Abuela Julio was not on the patio fixing my bike. When I woke up, I said, I cannot lose Lainez again. Esa noche, es que mi apellido Lainez había desaparecido de mi vida. Quedaba solo con a y mis paternos. Busqué por todas partes, pero mamá no estaba en el comedor ayudándome con la tarea. Abuela Ángela no estaba en la cocina preparando mi chocolate preferido. Abuelo Julio no estaba en el patio arreglando mi bicicleta. Cuando desperté, dije, no puedo perder la Inés otra vez. At school, Miss Soria said, we are going to start a new project, a family tree. Be creative and have fun. I remember my family trees in El Salvador. We had a mango and an avocado tree, I said. Rene Colato, the trees I'm talking about are your family and relatives, Miss Soria said. En la escuela, señorita Soria dijo, hoy empezaremos un nuevo proyecto, un árbol genealógico. Sean creativos y diviértanse. Recuerdo los árboles de mi familia en El Salvador. Tenía un árbol de mango y otro de aguacate. Dije, René Colato, los árboles de los que estoy hablando son tu familia y tus parientes, dijo señorita Soya. That evening, I opened a chest filled with family photographs. I found pictures of Abuela Angela. Mama told me that my grandmother used to dance in fairs and fiestas. Papa showed me a picture of when he was young. He had long, straight hair and was holding a clay pot. I know what I will do for my school project, I said. Esa tarde abrí un baúl lleno de fotografías de mi familia. Encontré fotos de Abuela Ángela. Mamá me contó que mi abuela bailaba en las ferias y fiestas. Papá me mostró una fotografía de cuando él era joven. Tenía el pelo largo y lacio. Tenía en sus manos una vasija de barro. Ya sé lo que haré para mi proyecto de la escuela, dije. 
On Saturday, Papa and I made copies of the pictures. Mama helped me find leaves for my tree. I used large pieces of paper, paints, and crayons. Soon, I had a family tree. It was as big as me. El sábado, papá y yo hicimos copias de las fotografías. Mamá me ayudó a buscar hojas para mi árbol. U usé grandes hojas de papel, pinturas y crayones. Al fin, tu árbol genealógico era tan grande como yo. On Monday, we presented our family trees. When it was my turn, I took a deep breath and walked to the front of the class. I am Rene Colato Lainez. Colato comes from Italy and Lainez from Spain, but I was born in El Salvador. I taped my family tree on the board for everyone to see. El lunes presentamos nuestros árboles genealógicos. Cuando fue mi turno, respiré profundo y fui al frente de la clase. Soy Rene Colato Lainez. Colato viene de Italia y Lainez de España. Pero yo nací en El Salvador. Pegué mi árbol genealógico en la pizarra para que todos lo pudieran ver. Cool. Everyone calls me Rene Colado. I pointed to my first last name. The last name Colado comes from Papa's family. Abuela Emilia is a potter. She molds clay to make delicate pots. Abuela René is a farmer. He plants and harvests fruits and vegetables. He takes care of his plants all year long and never gives up. En esta escuela todos me llaman René Colato. Señalé mi primer apellido. El apellido Colato viene de la familia de papá. Abuela Amelia es alfarera. Moldé el barro para hacer delicadas vasijas. Abuelo René es granjero. Siembra y cosecha frutas y verduras todos los días del año y nunca se da por vencido. I pointed to my second last name. Laenes is my second last name and it comes from Mama's family. Abuelo Julio is a poet. He recites wonderful poems and tells great stories. Abuela Angela is a great dancer. She has won many trophies and medals. Señalé mi segundo apellido. La Inés es mi segundo apellido y viene de la familia de mamá. Abuelo Julio es poeta, recita poemas maravillosos y cuenta historias magníficas. Abuela Ángela es una gran bailarina. Ha ganado muchos trofeos y medallas. And this is me, I said, pointing to my picture in the family tree. I am René Colado Vallejos. I am as hardworking as Abuela René and as creative as Abuela Amelia. I can tell wonderful stories like Abuela Julio and enjoy music like Abuela Angela. If you call me René Colado only, the other half of my family disappears. Y este soy yo. Dije señalando mi foto en el árbol genealógico. Soy René Polato Laínez. Soy tan trabajador como abuelo René y tan creativo como abuela Amelia. Puedo contar historias maravillosas como abuelo Julio y disfrutar de la música como abuela Ángela. Si me llaman René Polato solamente, desaparece la otra mitad de mi familia. After my presentation, I played Abuela Angela's music and everyone got up to dance. You have a wonderful name, a boy said. It's great to have two last names. Miss Soria smiled and said, from now on, you will be Rene Colato Lainez. Hooray, I said, as I danced with my new friends. Después de mi presentación, puse música de Abuela Angela y todos se pusieron a bailar. Tienes un nombre maravilloso, dijo un niño. Es fabuloso tener dos apellidos. Señorita Soria sonrió y dijo, de ahora en adelante será René Polato La Inés. Viva, dije, mientras bailaba con mis nuevos amigos. 
And that is the end of the book. Thank you so much for reading that with me. It was fun. Yeah, thank you. Gracias. So as I mentioned before, um, it's not a full lesson, but I would like to share with you an idea. We have, let me see. Forgive me for being a little slow on. So instead of the family tree where um, you are researching about your background, if you and your family wanted to do uh, an activity together, this is our family tree of interviewing your family to find out where your name comes from. So you might consider asking, when did you first start thinking of names for me? Where did you get your ideas for my name? What other names did you consider? Am I named after anyone? If so, who? How did you decide on my name? Was it hard deciding on a name for me? Why or why not? Why do you think my name fits perfectly or fits me perfectly? I love that. And what does my name mean? With your parents, try using the internet or a baby names book to discover the meaning of your name. So I wanted to ask you a few questions, Renee, as we shared with the audience before that you are also, besides being an author, you are a teacher. So um, in Los Angeles Unified School District, could you remind me of the name of the school again? And then what grades have you been teaching and how many years and what grade you're teaching now? Yes, I teach at Turnerles Elementary School and it is located in the San Fernando Valley. This is my year 27. I have been teaching for 27 years uh, from pre-K or TK to third grade. And this year I'm teaching a transitional kindergarten. And what was it that made you want to become a teacher? Is there anybody who inspired you or what made you decide to go into that career? I always loved my teachers. For me, they were very smart. They knew all the answers. And like in my country, El Salvador, our parents told us that we have to like our teacher, to love our teachers because they are our second parents and that's the way we saw them. Nuestros segundos padres. So I like that. So and I love my teacher so much. So I decided to become one of them, to become a teacher and to inspire children. It sounds like you had really positive adult role models to lead you that way. I'm so glad that you did become a teacher. Um, so how did you know, how did you discover your spark of writing and how did you know or get into writing and becoming an author? I always love to write. Uh, in my family, the other is a relative. It, it, he was my mother's uncle, great uncle. His name is Jorge Buenaventura Laines and he was a poet and a writer. Uh, and so because I love school so much and I was very smart, all my relatives say, oh, look at Rene, he is as smart as Tio Jorge. And I heard that a lot, that I was as smart as Tio Jorge, the writer. And maybe because of that, reading his books inspired me to write. But that moment when I decided to write was in Mexico City, when I was coming from El Salvador to the United States. I, with my father and I stayed in Mexico City for almost two months in an old trailer. I don't have, I didn't have any TV, anything to entertain me, no radio. So I said to myself, what am I, what am I supposed to do here? So I had my, a new notebook and I started to write and write and write and write. And I remember, remember that I was so happy writing stories, I writing poems, and that I said, I like it, I can do this. And when I came to the United States, I continued uh, writing in high school, in college. And one thing that always happened when I wrote something for my teachers, mm -hmm. All, all of them were amazing. And they asked me, did you really write this? Is this your idea? And I said, yes. And they told me that I was a good writer, that I was a good story. It was so good for them that one teacher invited me to participate in the Spanish newspaper in high school, La Voz Estudiantil. And the teacher 
who ran the newspaper. He was really impressed with my writing. And he said, René, te queremos, come with us. So, and I was a, a writer. I was able to interview teachers at, at my high school and bring my mind. My everything in Spanish for the newspaper. So being in the newspaper, that was great for me because finally somebody else was reading my, my writing. <laughs> what I love about that story is you had so many positive role models and, pe and people who were encouraging you along the way and you took an opportunity, you know, being in that room with limited resources and just went with it. Um, it's just, it's so great. I'm so glad that all those people supported you because we wouldn't have your books otherwise. Um, is there anything you want to say before we sign off with especially maybe words of hope and encouragement at this time when we're all um, in shelter in place? Yeah, for the students that keep working, keep reading. I know it is hard as we want to be together. Uh, as a teacher, I want to be with my students, to teach them, to read books, to do math, to do projects, to go to field trips, but uh, at this time we cannot do that. So we need to be connected, connected with the teacher, parents need to be connected. And if you don't have internet, you can call, uh, or you can send messages through your, through your mom or dad phone. And there is always a way you even you can write your teacher a letter, especially this week is Teachers Appreciation Week. <laughs> yes, and this is a Teacher Appreciation Week. And thank you, a shout out to all the teachers. Um, you know, if people didn't appreciate what you did before, they definitely should now. And just it's so important. And to remember that parents are teachers as well, and we as and students can be teachers as well, and just be that positive role model and lead by example and um i think you are uh, one of those wonderful examples and so happy that you're here i wanted to end with um asking you is there anything in the works maybe you can give us a little hint of what might uh, some other books that you might be um writing or getting published uh soon i have two books coming out soon and they are about two boys who go to the same classroom and they are in a in a dual language classroom so they will, they will speak in English and Spanish, and they are very good friends. Yeah, that's my website. <laughs> and those are, those are my books from my shoes and I, which is my brand new book. And there is the Tooth Fairy, Vamonos, Let's Go. And my two Rene books, I am Rene the Boy and Rene has two last names. And I am reading my book, my books in Spanish at YouTube, so you can go and check it out. I have, like, I think, four books by, by now, but I, uh, my plan is to read all of them. So thank you so much, Renee, for taking the time out from your teaching and your busy day to join us. Um, we are so grateful and hopefully soon we'll see you in the Bay Area, maybe at another one of our events. Um, or can maybe come out to one of our schools and feature one of your books, that would be wonderful. I'm hoping that you are going to stay um, safe and healthy. Um, and please, um, like Renee said, everybody, keep your connections going, whether it's internet or just a phone call or just even this, you know, a card and put it in the regular mail just to um, keep connected and um, be well. Thank you. Thank you. Adios. Bye, Bye Renee. Bye.